So now that we've discussed prevalence and risk scenarios, we come to a very important topic, which is when should you impose the guideline? Obviously, when the, the epidemic is uh, raging at a very high rate, is, feels out of control, it's spreading, we want to impose the guideline that we've discussed, which limits the indoor reproductive number for each space within some tolerance. And that would, for example, give us some number N1 from the safety guideline, R in less than epsilon, which is gonna be smaller than the normal occupancy of that room for a given time and all the other factors that we've been discussing. But what happens as the prevalence of infection goes down? Generically, there must be some sort of curve like this, and we'd like to understand what is the simplest reasonable model we can come up with that can tell us how to relax the approximation. So for example, let's think of a school or a business where we typically have this, a lot of the same people there every day, but some others are coming and going or maybe going home and getting infected and coming in. So the rate of infection is, is low. So we expect typically the number of infected people is zero or occasionally one. And as the prevalence goes down, then you know, we start to see uh, you know, that the situation is getting safer and safer. So there's a certain point P1 where we start to say, you know what, we can actually increase the occupancy of the space with everything else held fixed while still wearing masks. And then we hit the normal occupancy. And you might call that kind of the new normal, where we're going about our business. The room is filled with the typical number of people. Let's say the classroom is back to its normal size. We don't have any remote teaching going on, but we're wearing masks. Or taking other factor, uh, factors into account, such as higher ventilation rates, let's say, open windows. But then we continue lowering the prevalence. There's a certain point where we get rid of those other precautions. So extra opening of windows, or more importantly, the dominant effect is the removal of the mask, because we know that's a significant factor. And then you might call that back to the real normal, actually, not the new normal, where we are back to full occupancy and really not taking any extra precautions. That's going to happen at a rather low prevalence, but we hope that that time will eventually come, and hopefully not so far in the future. And I mentioned here a very important point we've not talked about yet in this class, but we should keep in the back of our minds, is when I talk about occupancy, I'm really talking about the number of susceptible people. We just saw that on the last couple of boards. But the number of susceptible people are really only those that are not immune to the disease, for example, by vaccination. So as, the vac as more and more people become vaccinated, then this occupancy number might, for example, let's say as a typical occupancy be a 25 people in a class, as more and more people are vaccinated, the number that we plug in this formula here might actually be lower when we adapt, uh, just make decisions because there are fewer and fewer susceptible people that are left. So that's another very important factor to keep in mind. Of course, also vaccination has the indirect effect of lowering the prevalence that is seen in the population as we start to stamp out the epidemic. So we also have that effect. So I won't talk about that any further now, but come back to this calculation uh, based on uh, the risk scenario, the second one that I talked about last time where we take into account prevalence. So let's look at the three different cases here. So the first one is where we have restricted occupancy. This is where we've decided there's an N1, which is epsilon over average beta tau. So all the physical parameters are buried in there. Um, and this is going to be something less than the normal occupancy, N0. Now, what is the tau we want to think about? Well, if we have a school or a business, this would be the cumulative time that people spend together to the point where the number of days they spend together is, let's say, on the order of a week uh, would be a reasonable number to think about um, because if we write tau as sort of the hours, typical hours per day uh, times some kind of maximum number of days, this maximum number of days could be set by, for example, the testing frequency. For example, here at MIT, uh, we are testing our entire population at least once a week in order for anyone, including myself, to be admitting to the, to the campus. And so we are definitely testing uh, within a week and catching new infections at that rate. Uh, it could also be motivated by the incubation time, which is the time to show symptoms. And most people will remove themselves. And we know that's around 5.5 days is a typically reported value. So again, on the order of a week. And there's also, of course, other ways that people are removed uh, or, or they recover. So it's removal and recovery, which is another way that if you start to go more than, let's say, two weeks, we start to think an affected person that didn't get removed and ended up in the hospital has probably recovered. So 
If we think of a certain number of days and hours per day, that gives us a tau that is going to go into this formula. And actually, I should also mention that for simplicity here, you know, technically, this should be uh, n1 minus 1. And I can either include that or not when I do this calculation, but I'm generally thinking of n1, which is going to be you know, bigger than 1. So think of like an occupancy of 10 people in a classroom or something might be a limit uh, that we would be interested uh, in considering. But certainly, we can put the, the, the 1 in there if we want to. So now let's ask ourselves, how would we start to reopen the space once we've decided on a sort of safe occupancy uh, during the greatest level of restrictions? So that would then lead us into a phase of relaxing restrictions. And this would still be with masks. So keeping in mind that masks are an essential part of achieving a, a reasonable occupancy when the pandemic is high uh, and there's a lot of prevalence, and that we would only sort of start to re relax occupancy first before we take away the suggestion to, to wear masks. And that would be then the last step. So for relaxing restrictions, we're then going to be interested in the indoor reproductive number being less than now a rescaled value, which would be epsilon over pi qi n. And the indoor reproductive number, remember, is n minus 1, but it's being approximately uh, n uh, times beta tau. So I've replaced, um, again, n minus 1 with n just to kind of get a simpler formula. And so notice now here, n is in both sides of the equations. If I want to solve for the value n2, which is this yellow curve here, I'm actually going to have to uh, put the ends on one side and take a square root. So I'll get my n2 then would be the uh, square root of epsilon over beta tau uh, times p, pi times qi. And I remember also another approximation here is that pi is definitely much less than 1. We're looking at the limit of very low prevalence. And so also, therefore, qi is basically tending to 1 because it's 1 minus pi. And so that factor is really not that important. And notice, also, epsilon over beta tau, that's n1. So n2 is approximately related to n1 by the square root of n1 divided by pi. So, uh, so that's, this, that's this number here. So as a function of prevalence, this yellow curve is 1 over square root of prevalence. And one nice thing about writing it this way is that I can decide on a reopening protocol without actually redoing my calculation with all those complicated variables, including the risk tolerance epsilon and all the factors that go into beta, because I've lumped them into n1. What I'm saying here is that we've already done a calculation and decided to impose a certain occupancy restriction on a certain space based on principles that we've been discussing uh, in this course. But now, as prevalence goes down, according to the simple formula, whenever n2 is bigger than 1, you know, we would use this if n2 is, is bigger than n1. So basically, when these two curves cross, as you go to lower prevalence, you'll now switch to 2, and you'll start increasing. And you will do that until you get to n0. So we'll do this. This is the relaxing restrictions. And then we'll stop, uh, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, so basically we'll go, we'll go, N2 can, when N2 is bigger than we allow this, um, until uh, N2 equals N1. And that's this, this, this time here, P, P2. So basically, uh, we start imposing restrictions at P1. So P1, so, so basically we start re relaxing restrictions when P1, so the, when the prevalence equals P1, that would be, uh, when, um, <clears throat> when n2 is equal to n1, and so that would be when uh, P, uh, P, P1 is 1 over n1. So essentially, that's when you expect to find one infected person. So this is approximately 1 over n1. So th up here, you, uh, when you go below this, you're saying, well, it's actually unlikely that during the time tau, we even get one infected person. And that's when we start to relax. OK, so that's the first kind of crossover point. And there's a second crossover point when this is equal uh, to P2. Um, uh, sorry, is equal to N0. That's, that's what P2 is. And so basically, uh, P2 
which is when we would you know hit the saturation point and that's kind of when we would have like reopened in some sense to the full uh, normal situation uh, that would be uh, when n2 is equal to n0 wait sorry i wrote here n2 equals n1 sorry i meant when n2 equals n0 sorry <laughs> that's when that's the time p2 here when n2 is equal to n0 that's when we cut off so if this is n0 and we solve for pi you can see that we get um, n1 over n0 squared. So that is the place where I then switch, and now I'm going to cap the occupancy at n0. So maybe to, to summarize here, what I would say is that the occupancy should be less than or equal to uh, n1 for uh, pi greater than p1. It'll be n2, which depends on pi, uh, for uh, pi between uh, uh, p1 or, or p2 and p1. And then as the prevalence gets lower, we go to full occupancy n0 when pi is less than p2. So this is basically this, this full curve of, of, of reopening. And then the final decision to make is when do we return completely normal and take away certain restrictions we've done. So here I mentioned mass. We could also include in this calculation, you know, relaxing other restrictions, such as maybe not having the ventilation on quite so high. So that would be when we finally go back to no restrictions of any kind. We're sort of back to normal. Uh, so this means no masks, no other precautions, full occupancy. So in this case, uh, we need R in is going to be less than epsilon over, um, uh, well, let's see here. It's, it's the same as before. We have this pi uh, n that we just uh, looked at, or technically times qi. But now we have another factor, pm squared. Because compared to the case with no mass, we know the bound in the guidelines, so the effective beta, uh, just gets rescaled by pm squared. So technically, that's that's in uh, 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 R in here, but now you know we have this sort of extra factor. You kind of think of it like a rescaling of epsilon. And so what that's going to do for us then is that there's a, a the uh, <clears throat> there, there's another curve that goes kind of like this, which is just like this one, but it's shifted by a factor pm cubed, or pm squared, sorry, which is kind of like the case where you had, so this is like, the, this is like no masks. It's like the n2 with no masks. And the other curve is with masks. And there's a rescaling factor, which really has to do with the sort of remediation that you've done. And in this case, p3 would then just be uh, pm squared times p2. So if our PM is a factor of 10%, let's say masks are capturing 10% uh, or letting 10% of infectious droplets get through, the PM squared might be a factor of 100. So then we would wait till the prevalence is 100 times smaller before we finally allow people to remove masks and be at full occupancy. And you could make a similar calculation for other types of restrictions. And in fact, you can calculate such a curve for a given room, given scenario of human behavior, and interventions such as filtration or, or ventilation. And what the theory allows you to do is to, of course, recalculate N1, and then you can recalculate N2 as well. And so you can say, well, what if, actually, I don't like this curve. I would like to try to reopen my school sooner. OK, how would I do that? Well, I know that if I make various interventions, I can raise the pink curve. So I can end up somewhere here, let's just say. Um, this might be. Uh, with uh, uh, safety interventions. Actually, one such intervention, intervention, by the way, is masks themselves. Because if I follow this curve all the way down here, there's some curve down here which is no masks, which is the safety guideline with no masks. And if I turn on masks, I go up. Okay, But when I make that intervention, also P2, notice, scales like, like, uh, also like N1. And so that's actually moving in this direction. And so I've essentially moved this yellow curve. And so I'm, I'm now going to say, well, you know, with a different set of, uh, of interventions, 
I can make the room safer. And what that does, it gives me more people in the room. But it also means that I can that, that I change sort of when I make the decision to reopen. In particular, I can kind of get myself to full occupancy at a higher prevalence because the room is actually now made safer. So uh, uh, I noted, but on the other hand, this 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 switch here was at one over n one, so it kind of this this part kind of shrinks a little bit as this ultimately kind of goes up to full full occupancy. So so basically, um, I think compared to the current situation or the typical situation where policymakers are making decisions based on something like the six foot rule and you know a somewhat arbitrary feeling about what is a high prevalence? Is it one percent? Is it 0.1 percent? And we decide, okay, now we can close our schools or reopen our schools or set the occupancy at half. The guideline tells you how to set occupancy for sort of the worst case scenario when the pandemic is, 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 is very you know, prevalent in, in society. But now also through these kinds of calculations, we can make rational decisions about how to reopen. I'm not advocating necessarily for the exact formulas that you find on the board here, but the principles I'm showing you could lead to quantitative and scientifically justifiable ways of taking a specific space and a specific usage of that space and deciding how to close as prevalence goes up and reopen as prevalence goes down, including ultimately returning to normal and removing masks and all other forms of precaution as the epidemic disappears.